4.44, situation A. Player A1 attempts to catch the ball while running rapidly. A1 muffs the ball, but succeeds in securing it before it strikes the floor. A1 then begins a dribble. There has been no violation provided that A1, after catching the ball, released the ball to start his dribble prior to the pivot foot being lifted from the floor. The critical thing to note in this situation is that the ball is not considered caught until the player actually has control of the ball. An attempt to catch the ball is not a catch until it is clearly successful. No traveling can occur if there is not player control. 4.44 Situation B Player A1 attempts a try after ending the dribble. The try does not touch the backboard, the rim, or any other player. A1 runs and is able to catch the ball before it strikes the floor. In this case, there has been no violation. When A1 recovered his own try, he could begin a dribble, make a pass, or try again. This is often miscalled as a pass to self, but as long as it is an actual try for goal, there is no violation. The official has to judge whether the try was legitimate or an attempt by the player to gain an advantage by passing the ball to himself. 4.3, situation A, C and D. A1 jumps to try for goal. B1 also jumps and touches the ball, and A1 returns to the floor holding the ball, or touches the ball and A1 drops it to the floor, and then becomes the first to touch it after it bounces. Both of these cases are traveling violations. In the first case, A1 is called for traveling for returning to the floor while holding the ball, and in the second case, A1 is called for traveling for lifting the pivot foot before starting a dribble. Remember, since B1's contact with the ball did not prevent the pass or try, the ball remains alive and subsequent action is covered by the rules that apply to the situation. 4.44.5 Situation B A1 dives for a loose ball and slides after gaining control. A1 is in a position either on his back or his stomach. This is legal. The player may pass, shoot, start a dribble, or call a timeout. The direction of the slide by itself does not constitute an advantage. Simply sliding toward a player's own basket is not enough to create an advantage. The advantage is determined by what the player does while sliding. Once A1 has the ball and is no longer sliding, he may not roll over. If he's flat on his back, he may sit up without violating. But any attempt to get up is traveling unless A1 is dribbling. It is also traveling if A1 puts the ball on the floor, lets go of it, rises, and then is first to touch the ball. As a new official, I'm fairly confident that you have been told you need to slow down. A common problem, an issue for new officials is being in too much of a hurry in general, but specifically at the spot of the foul. Today we're going to address that. As a new official, you don't want to be in that position where you are doing the look back. I call it the look back. You've made a great call. You're 100%. You start for the table to report your foul and you realize you don't know. You don't know who your fouler was. Or worse yet, you guess and put the foul on the wrong player. You have to look back, you have to search, you create that moment of perception by everybody observing, coaches, players, etc., that you are indecisive. And you want to eliminate that. You are decisive and you want to show that. White five, I got it. White five, block, sideline. White 20. 
Play 20. Block. Two. Two. Head check, sideline. Black 10. Black 10. Head check. Stop. Each official has a primary coverage area. When it comes to three-pointers, the trail has the majority of the shots outside the arc, but the lead does have three-point shots from the free throw line extended to the end line. It's the lead's responsibility. When a player attempts a three-point field goal, the primary coverage official will signal by extending one arm at head level with three fingers extended. If the three-point attempt is successful, the covering official will signal by fully extending both arms overhead with palms facing. Lead. Marks. Lead. Scores. Trail. Mirrors. Trails primary. Trails primary. Leads primary. Lead position adjust to get a look. Marks the three-pointer. Scores the three-pointer and the trail mirrors the make. Trails primary position adjust. Mark. Score it. Leads primary coverage area. Lead marks. Lead scores it, trail mirrors. Trails primary, marks it, scores it. Again, the trail, mark, score. Lead does not mirror. One more. Trail. Mark it. Score it. Today's video will focus on legal guarding position. In this next play, this is a very difficult play to get right. If you watch the defender, he establishes legal guarding position initially and then moves laterally and takes the majority of the contact in the torso. The lead official calls a block on this play. This is what I would refer to as a 50-50. So my teaching point here is if we have another one that matches that later in the game, let's make sure we have a block. If you watch it in slow motion, 40 red puts either one or two hands on the offensive player and then goes to the floor. We should either have a hand check or a block. Take a look at the spot shadow defender. The offensive player makes his move to the basket. Once airborne, the defender slides over to create the contact. This is a really good block call by our lead. On this next transition play, watch the defender. Never establishes legal guarding position, slides up under the offensive player as he goes airborne. Now if we watch it in slow motion and watch the official right where the contact occurs, the official is straight lined on the play. If we do a little better job of beating the play down the floor and accepting the play at lead, I think we might have a different call on this play. Now on this next play, this is a really difficult play to get right. And we've watched it about a hundred times, and I'm going to be real honest with you. 
I still don't know what I would do live ball versus slow motion. But if you watch the defender, does he establish? I would say yes. And now what is he entitled to do? He can move laterally or obliquely, which he does, and still con takes the contact in the torso. I think that's a charge. On this next play, if you watch the secondary defender, number 15, White, he has his back turned to the play. He then turns, takes the contact right in the torso, gets run over. We should clearly have a charge on this play. On this next play, this is a really good play. His primary defender hustles down the floor. 24 white goes airborne to get a shot off on a transition play. Does the defender ever establish legal guarding position? He hustles and gets very close to establishing, but it looks to me that he doesn't truly get there in time before the kid goes airborne. This should be a block. This next play is another good example of our official being in good position to make what I consider a pretty easy charge call. If you watch the play start, develop, and finish, our center official hustles, beats the play down the floor, sets up in really good position to referee this play. Kid goes airborne, the defender has established legal guarding position, contact in the torso, charge. In this last play, it is a transition play, but if you take a look, we have a no call on this play, and if you watch this play in slow motion, the trail official kind of gets caught in no man's land, which is not any fault of his own, but we have to do a better job of finding a way to get in position on this play to have a whistle. This is clearly a block. Two bodies go to the floor. We have to make sure we have a call on that play. Once the defender has obtained legal guarding position, then the defender instantly moves into the maintaining defensive mode. When the defender is in the maintaining mode, he or she can do anything and be legal except cause the contact. In our play, the offensive player did not get his head and shoulders past the defender. The defender did nothing wrong. So until the defender has been beaten, nearly every time the block charge foul will be on the offensive player.